What's going on, everybody? Today, we are going to be getting back into some of these cooking videos. So we're in my kitchen. All right. And today, we're going to be making a traditional Irish fruit bread or barum brack or brad brack, whatever you guys want to call it. I like to call it barum brack. All right. And this is a traditional bread that is made Halloween in Ireland and is served with tea. It's absolutely amazing. You can serve it over some butter. You gotta serve it warm. All right. So we're going to get into it. Flying around the sun on the shine blue sphere. Life's a celebration, so let's spread a little cheer. Just share the love, but don't hold no fear. Because we're all just spinning on the wheel of the year. From sound when the may bond and all the in between. Open your mind up to everything. Don't worry about the past, just slip right here. Because we're all just spinning on the wheel of the year. Alright, guys, so for this recipe, you are going to need, and I have everything already ready to go for it here. Alright, you're going to need. Three quarters of a cup of milk. You're going to need some dry yeast. All right. And you're going to need two teaspoons of that. Now, one of these packets, if you buy like the three packet little rolls that they sell of these, one packet is two teaspoons to two and one quarter teaspoons. So just one packet of this will do. You need one egg beaten and you want this egg to chill and get to room temperature. Okay. It's very important that it gets to room temperature for this recipe. One egg white mixed with one tablespoon water, and this is going to be something that we're going to brush on a little later on. Three tablespoons of sugar, two tablespoons of melted butter, yes. Now here's our fruit for it here, right? We're going to go with one cup of mixed dry fruit, okay? Now I am going with raisins, gold raisins, and craisins for this recipe, but you could use whatever you want for the most part. Now it's time for the good stuff. Yes, that right there is one tablespoon of pumpkin pie spice. Okay, now you can use an apple pie spice. You can just use cinnamon, nutmeg, clover, and do it that way as well. But I like the pumpkin pie spice for this, so that's what we're going with. And then you're going to need a little quarter teaspoon of salt and three cups of flour. So there's two cups in here, one cup in there, and all this flour that you're seeing on the table, don't worry because we're going to need that in a minute. Okay, guys, so the first thing that you want to do is you want to heat your milk to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. No more, no less. So that means you got to stay with it, all right? So have yourself a mixing bowl handy and a thermometer handy, okay? So that that way you can make sure that you can get your stuff to room to 80 degrees doesn't take very long to do it right? it's already saying that's 90 degrees I beg to differ I'm calling bullshit but either way when we're done with this we're gonna to want to put this in the bowl all right so we got our warm milk here all right and in goes our two tablespoons of butter and our three tablespoons of sugar all right now you're going to want to mix this together until the sugar dissolves, all right? So you want to beat it. Let's beat it up. Yes. Get this all mixed up all good. Okay, so what we're doing is we are creating the setup to get our yeast activated. So that is mainly what we are trying to do here, okay? So as soon as you see that there is no more sugar on the bottom... It doesn't really take that long to do. That's when we're going to add our yeast. All right. We're going to sprinkle it on top. Let it get foamy. Mix it in. And we're going to let it hang for five minutes, okay? So in goes our yeast. And this will work faster if you spread it out a little more. Get a really good sprinkle on it. All right. And you're going to see that this is going to start foaming up a bit. All right. Right around here. See it. All right, guys. So our yeast is activated and ready to go. So in is going to go your egg. All right. And get that in there. Get all that egg in there. Yes. Okay. Now we're going to mix the egg in. 
And now after we mix this egg in, comes the fun part. And the part where you're going to need something bigger than a fork, okay? <laughs> I prefer to use a wooden spoon for this, so that's what I'm going to use, okay? Just got to go grab one real quick. Get this egg nicely mixed in there. Yes. All right, looking sharp, looking sharp. Grab this one spoon real quick. Bada bing, bada boom. Gonna need that. Because in is going to go your pumpkin pie spice. All right. Your salt. And your two cups of flour. All right. Just two cups at first. Your last cup's going to be put in later, okay? Now, you want to mix this really well, and I'm going to go ahead and do that so you don't sit here. It takes a couple minutes to mix it in together, all right? So give me a couple minutes, and I'll be right back, and I'll show you what it's looking like. All right, so you're going to come up with something that looks like this after everything's pretty much well incorporated. Now, if it's not fully incorporated, it's okay, because we're still going to be mixing it, because now is when you want to add your fruit. All right? Get in there. Get in there. Butthole. There we go. Raisins always like to get stuck. All right, so we're going to mix this all together. Now, traditionally, all right, as we're looking at this here, let's get that going. So traditionally, when people made brown brag, they used to put little trinkets and gifts inside their bread, okay? Now, I'm not going to do that for this loaf, but feel free to do that for yourself. In old times, people would put rings in there to try and see who's going to be married next or put pennies in there for good fortune, etc., etc. You can do that. But if you're going to do that, wrap it up in some parchment paper before you do that. Because if you're doing anything that will have any kind of a reaction, you can get somebody sick. So you want to be really careful about doing that kind of stuff, okay? So definitely look up the safest way and the safest things that you could actually bake into bread, okay? So just... Disclaimer on that. So I'm going to mix all this up together here. And uh, then we're going to move on to the next step, which is going to be adding more flour. All right, guys. So check this out. Right? When you get done this, you're going to end up with a sticky dough ball like this. All right. And what you want to do is you want to knead it out. All right. Give it a couple turns. So you want to knead, knead, dust, knead, knead. And what's going to happen is it's going to... Kind of get all the air and stuff out of there. And you only want to do it for like a few turns, all right? And you want to make sure that you have some flour on the table when you do this. And you have some flour on your hands when you do this. Or else, you can end up with a very, very sticky situation on your hands, if you will. All right. Let's get that back on top of itself here. Okay. Now comes time for the fun part. We are going to put this in a greased bowl. Alright. It's already greased. And so basically I just took a stick of butter and just drew all over it like a six-year-old. <laughs> That's the fun part, okay? And then you want to take this, put it in there. And then, with a damp dish towel, cover it up and put it somewhere where there's not going to be a whole lot of airflow and where it's going to be nice and warm, okay? See you in one hour, guys. All right, guys, so while you're waiting, clean up. Do something else because it's going to be about an hour. But what you're looking for is for the dough to double in size, okay? And it's called proofing, all right? So after the first proof, you're going to see this dough, and you're going to see it's going to be kind of sticky, and that's what you're looking for. Um, so basically, the fruit is going to take a lot of the moisture out. That's why we want to make sure that we keep it as moist as possible so we have a nice moist bread, and we don't have a brick coming out of the oven. All right, so that's why the proofing is so important, and that's also why it's so important to have grease on the inside of your pan and to make sure that you have a warm, damp towel to go over it. Wow, it's proven. All right. All right. 
So, your next step, guys, is to get a baking sheet out and grease the shit out of it, all right? I mean, like, really get in there and really grease it. Just like you did with the ball, just draw on it like you're a six-year-old. Yeah. All right, so let's, uh, that's good enough, though. I already did most of it. Okay, so what we are looking at for our thing is we want to get some flour here. And we want to put it on the table again so we can get ready to knead again. Now, I'm holding the phone with one hand and doing the thing with the other, so... I always like to leave all of my follies on camera, so this is a good one. Yeah, there's my counter. Okay. So, guys, a little bit of flour. You don't need much. All right? Just like that much. Just kind of spread it out. All right? And get the flour out of the way here. Because look at this. So, you want your dough ball to have doubled in size. And this most certainly has. It looks wonderful. All right, and you want it to be kind of sticky, all right? It's not going to be super dry or anything like that, all right? But it's going to be kind of sticky. You want to roll it around with the flour, okay? And then, from there, here is where you want to start kneading, okay? So we're going to knead this a few times over, all right? And then what we're going to do is we're going to be putting this on that baking sheet, and I'll be here with the next step, okay? Okay, guys. So what you want to do after you knead this out again is you want to form it into a loaf and put it in the center, okay? And the final touch to go on this, remember our egg white from earlier? Yes. You mix the egg white with a tablespoon of water and we just want to brush this thing down, okay? Okay. And that's going to help get the outside nice and crusty when it bakes. And it's going to be wonderful. All right, yes. And you want to give it a pretty good, give it a pretty good coverage, okay? Try not to miss any spots. Really get in there. All right. Now, you see these little imperfections and all that? Yeah, this may not turn out to be the prettiest bread I've ever baked. But it's still going to be pretty awesome. And it's going to taste wonderful, and that's what really matters here, people. All right? So now, from here, you're going to let this sit and proof open in a warm place for another 35 to 40 minutes. All right? Now, while you're doing this, go ahead and get your oven preheating to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And I'll be back when it's time to throw her in the oven. Yes! All right, let me put this on the center rack, guys. Center rack. Look at that bad boy. He's going to be nice. All right, guys. Ready to see it? Oh, yeah. It's looking pretty good. That looks pretty damn good right there. <laughs> so, let's go ahead and uh, get... We want to move this from the pan and put it on a wire rack for like 5-10 minutes. Let it cool a little bit, and then we can cut it and slice it. Yes. Yeah, I can't wait to dig into this thing. Just a couple more minutes to let it cool for a bit. Now, you want to serve this warm if you can. All right. And I got to say, this looks better than I thought it was going to. <laughs> Score. Nailed it. Yes. This looks phenomenal. Look at that. There's your thumbnail, people. <laughs> All right, so like I said, you can put any kind of fruit you want in this. Um, the thing I'm most happy about is that this is not too dry in the middle. It's still pretty moist. Now you want to serve this warm with some butter, or you can serve it with tea. Both work very well. All right, I'm going to go ahead and try a piece straight up, see if it stands on its own. All right, let's uh, let's give this a shot, shall we? So. I'm gonna try the first leg like, piece without anything, and then you know if it's if it's a little bland or something, I'll give it some butter. Yeah, yeah, this is banging. So a little, hey, a little country crop, right? 
the shed spread, right? Mm. Yeah, warm with some butter. Dip it in some tea. Cut it into slices and toast it. Another thing you could do. Solid. So, took a little bit of time to make. Totally worth it. Um, this is something that you would want to bring to your salad circle or something like that. You would definitely be impressed. Now, I'm going to do a couple more of these cooking videos for some salad recipes coming up over the next couple of months. All right, over the next couple of weeks. So, definitely stay tuned for that. Another thing, since I didn't do any announcements yet, Misconceptions has been nominated for a 2020 Witchy Award for Outstanding Album of the Year. I'm very thankful for this. I'm very humbled for this by this. So please go and vote for my album if you feel moved to do so. All right. Um, so until next time, guys. I'm Cloud with Moonwill Magic. Talk to you later, guys. Bright blessings and blessed be.